In the previous lecture, we saw the introduction of basic system properties and there I mentioned 12 different types of systems. And out of those 12 systems, we are going to discuss two systems in this lecture and they are static and dynamic systems. We are discussing static and dynamic systems together because they are closely related. And if you remember, I also explained about past input, present input and future input. These three terms are very important to define static and dynamic systems. So we will once more try to understand what are they and after that we can easily define the static and dynamic systems. You can see the definition of static and dynamic systems on your screen but it will not be visible now because I don't want you guys to read the definitions right now. I want you to focus on the important concept which we are discussing. The basic notation which we are using in this lecture is this one. We will represent the input by xt, we will represent the output by yt and the system will be represented by a block. And in this chapter, generally we don't have the idea about the system. We don't know the properties of system. We only know the relation between output and input. And the relation is based on the system, the type of system. So by looking at the relation, we will try to find out the nature of the system. So this is the only thing we are going to focus in this chapter. Now to understand the past input, the present input and the future input, let's take three different cases. In case number one, yt is equal to xt minus one. In case number two, yt is equal to xt. And in the last case, in the third case, yt is equal to xt plus one. Now if you remember the last lecture, we have already discussed these three cases and we know the first case is having the output yt dependent on the previous or past input. Let's call it past input because we will use this name in the later examples past input and in the second case yt is equal to xt and it is dependent on the present input. And in the last case, yt equal to xt plus 1, the output is dependent on the future input. We already know this. Now let's take one example to understand this. And there is one very important point regarding all these. I have already told you the input is equal to xt. And if you see the first case and the third case, you will find yt is equal to xt minus 1 and yt is equal to xt plus 1. This does not mean that the input is changed to xt minus 1 in the first case and xt plus 1 in the second case. The input is not changed but it is same as xt and here we are having xt minus 1 because of the system. In this particular case the system is making yt equal to xt minus 1. Our input is still xt. In the same way here yt is equal to xt plus 1 because of system only. That's why we are discussing different system properties. Now let's take one example to have a clear understanding of this. Let's say x minus 2 is equal to 1.5, x minus 1 is equal to 2.0, then x0 is equal to 2.5, x of 1 is equal to 3.0. So these are the different values of signal in xt. When t is equal to minus 2, xt is equal to 1.5. When t is equal to minus 1, xt is equal to 2.0. In the same way, when t is equal to 1, xt is equal to 3.0. So this is what we have and we are feeding these all inputs to a system. And I'm considering the case number 1 only. You can think about case number 2 and case number 3 by yourself. We will only discuss case number one. So there is a system which is making output yt equal to xt minus one. So let's see what will be yt according to these inputs. yt when t is equal to let's say zero, this means y of zero will be equal to x zero minus one. So it will be equal to x minus one. x minus one is equal to 2.0. So y0 is equal to 2.0 instead of 2.5. If there was a system acting only as a buffer, 
we will have y t equal to x t and in that scenario y of 0 will be same as x of 0 that means 2.5 but here it is 2.0 depending on the past input x minus 1 it is depending on the past input because the system which we are using is producing some delay and because of that delay instead of having the input x0 which is present at t equal to 0 we are getting the input which is present at t equal to minus 1 and this is all happening because of the system which we are using so I think you now understand how the system is affecting the output and how we can have the relation between the output and input based on the system we are using now we can move on to the definitions of a static and dynamic systems we will first discuss about static system when the output of system depends only on the present values of input we call that system static system pretty easy to understand let's take one example in this example the output yt is equal to twice of xt okay and you can clearly see the output yt is dependent on the present input there is no need to worry about this two here it is coefficient so yt is function of signal xt and we already know xt is the present value of input and yt is also the present output so yt is dependent on the present input and this is what is written in the definition the output of the system depends only on the present values of input so this system here yt equal to 2 xt is a is a static system this is static in nature and you can also check in examinations by simply making t equal to 0 1 2 or any value for example let's make t equal to 0 you will have y of 0 equal to twice of x of 0 so present input present output you can also make t equal to minus 1 1 or whatever you want because sometimes in examinations if you check for 0 you will get a static system but if you check for other values you will not get a static system and in that scenario the system will become dynamic system so let's first read the definition the output of system depends on past or future values of input at any instant of time this point is important at any instant of time if at any instant of time the output of the system depends on past or future it is going to be dynamic system it can depend on the present value also for example if there is a system depending on the present as well as the past values of input then also it is going to be dynamic system let's take one example to understand this in a much better way signal yt is equal to xt plus xt minus 1 we already know xt is a present value of input xt minus 1 is a past value of input so you can see signal yt is dependent on the present value of input as well as the past value of input and as you can see the output is dependent on the past input the system is going to be dynamic the system producing this relationship is dynamic in nature and I hope you now understand what are static systems and what are dynamic systems but we are not done with static and dynamic systems as we are required to solve examples containing all the different possibilities in this lecture I will solve two examples and in the coming presentations we will solve few more examples to have clear understanding of this topic let's take our first example in the first example output yt is equal to x t plus 1 plus x t this is fairly easy question to solve therefore I will make it homework problem for you now let's solve problem number 2 in this yt is equal to e raised to power minus t plus 1 multiplied with xt now this question is important because you may commit one mistake here you will see t plus 1 here and you will straight away say the output is dependent on the future values of input and thus the system is dynamic but you need to understand one thing here e raised to power minus t plus 1 is a coefficient it is not the input it is 
coefficient like in this case 2 was the coefficient and we never bothered about 2 here we only focused on xt in the same way you don't have to worry about any coefficient even if it is having t in it you only have to worry about the input the input is xt and we know xt is the present value of input it will give us all the different values which are present values and yt is dependent on xt here that's why the system is going to be static in nature so this is all for this lecture and try to solve the first question here and once you have your answer post it in comment section in the next lecture we will solve few more questions based on static and dynamic systems